Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great and for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. Today we are kicking off our week one in the X9 Draft League. We're going up against Poker Alex. If you haven't already checked out my intro video to the X9 Draft League and the team building analysis, I'll leave it up in the top right hand corner. It might be worth going and checking that out. You'll get an idea of what the Draft League is all about and why I've picked the team that we're playing today. Before coming into today's match, uh, there was a few mistakes when I was actually building the team because obviously showdown, I had anything goal rules. Um, so some of the, the um, some of the moves that I picked weren't actually legal uh, for the actual team. So one of them was Jolteon. Uh, I wanted Raw, as you, as you would have seen. I couldn't have that. It's not legal anymore. So Yawn is the option over that. Uh, the other one was Scrafty as well. So Scrafty doesn't get knockoff anymore, which is a real shame. So I've opted for Crunch there instead. Um, so they're the only two changes um, overall. But uh, you can see we've got the Mimikyu, the Torkoal, the Venusaur, the Charizard, and the Jolteon. So I'm hoping it's going to go all right. Now, I've been kind of thinking like back and forth quite a lot um, whether or not... Right, Pire would be a good shout because it feels like it would be good, but I feel like Alex is probably going to tech for that quite heavily with things like Chandelure getting energy ball, with things like Vikavol also getting energy ball. So I think it might be a little bit more difficult for Iperia to operate than, than some of the other Pokemon in here. And we've got a game plan. We're going to stick with it, see how we get on, and um, hopefully it all works out. So I'm just waiting on Alex coming on now. So we'll hop over into the match as soon as we uh, we hook up friends. Right, we are finally into today's match against the two hot to handle Harry Amas, Poga Alex and uh, myself, Southwest Go Bunnies. Let's decide the rules. Um, I think we're just going series nine. We'll go with the Marnie theme as always. And uh, yeah, nerves are setting in. I think the big thing in this match is obviously we want to try and just capitalize on any opportunities that we get in this match. Interested to see what Alex has brought as well. Obviously, we mentioned in the analysis about the, the Vika Vault. I really do worry about that Pokemon. I think Chandelure as well is going to be a bit obnoxious to deal with. Hello, friends. I'm just sitting down to edit this video, put it together so I can put it out to you guys. Uh, and I just thought it would be worthwhile to mention that um, there was a trade week prior to week one starting. So after the draft had finished, we had uh, a bunch of time to go and trade Pokemon with Pokemon that were available. It weren't picked in the initial draft. Now, I haven't done my homework here. Alex has made a bunch of trades. I've just talked about Vikavolt and Chandelure, and he's actually traded those out, which I didn't actually find out until after the match. But it's totally on my head. I just wanted to put this in before we get any further in the video because I think it uh, otherwise makes me look even more dumb than I do in the first place talking about these Pokemon when they're not even there. So big disclaimer there. Thanks so much, guys. Hope you enjoy the rest of the video. And uh, make sure to check out Alex's side of the battle as well over on his YouTube channel. It'll be linked down in the description below um, and see how, what, what it's like from his perspective because... Um, it's always interesting getting like both sides to see the full story of a battle. Poker Alex with the Alolan Marowak, the Galarian Zapdos, the Fungus, the Mudsdale, Tapu Fini, and the Cresselia. Okay, so. Um, right, what are we going to We need Taunt. We need Taunt, don't we, to shut things down. Mimikyu feels good as a lead because it threatens... You know, the, the one thing that I would say is, though, that I could potentially see him going with the, the Zapdos and Mudsdale lead, which makes me want to lead the Jolteon um, just to get around that that core. The other option is I kind of want Mimikyu to, um, to come in for the taunt because that Fungus can be a bit obnoxious as well. Uh, okay, what are we going to go with? Venusaur feels actually quite good in this match, you know, as a late game mon, almost. But do we want the sun? That's the thing. We could go Venusaur Torkoal as well. Um, or we could play it super safe and go like Mimikyu, Venusaur. Although, that, like, Charizard was always our player. I think we go with what we kind of decided. Jolteon, Charizard. Um, I think we're going to need, I think, Venu and Torkoal. If I'm completely honest, I think that's what we'll lock in. We'll lock in with those four. 
We'll, we'll ignore the taunt. We'll ignore the taunt for this first one. I don't know how bad it's going to go. But, yeah, we'll see. We'll get into this first one, see how it goes. It's obviously a best of three. So, we're going to we'll just test the waters now. And then we'll go into our second one. Uh, and hopefully, if it doesn't work out this time, we can kind of turn turn things around after we get a bit of a, a better idea of how things are going to work out. So, we're seeing Cresselia and the Zapdos there, which is... Honestly, not too bad for us. Um, I obviously worry about the Cresselia. So whether or not we want to go with something like... I don't know if I want to go Airstream just yet. Um, could go Max. We could pick up a knockout here onto the Zapdos pretty quickly. Um, and go for like a Yawn into, to, into Cress. The problem is they're going to get the Trick Room up. But it's actually not too bad as long as... As long as Charizard doesn't take any damage this turn, we can max go for that and then go for the Yawn into the Cresselia and shut that down or at least kind of force a switch out the next turn onto it. And I think that's probably not a bad idea. So we've got to, got to win the speed tie first if that isn't... Because there's a part of me that thinks is that Zapdos scarfed as well, you know? But we're pulling the trigger early on. We've got to do it. Got to try and get rid of this um, Zapdos as soon as possible. And see if it works out. Not confident. Not. <laughs> I'm a little bit confident. I'm not like 100% confident. But I feel like we can't stop the trick room right now. Like if we had that your, uh, the role like we initially thought we would. We'd have access to. Make things a bit better. Okay so Zapdos probably going to go for the airstream as well. What's the Crest going to do? Like, Crest could have Ally Switch as well. Are you going to do this to us? Are you going to do this to us, Alex? Ally Switch would be bad to see. Bad to see. It would be really bad. Um, but we're kind of safe with... No, it's just going to help in hand. Okay, well, that makes sense. Going to get some big fat damage onto the onto the board. Go for Yawn into the Crest. Makes things a little bit more tricky for him to utilize that Pokemon at least. Um, we get the Airstream. I don't think it's going to be enough to pick up the Knockout, though. No. But we'll keep pace with, with the Zapdos regardless if it goes for an airstream here. Which you would imagine it probably is going to go for into the Zard. Um, oh, it's revealing the Rockfall. Okay, well, the helping hand there, not ideal. Um, it goes for the Rockfall. But our Charlie Berry really helping us out a bunch. Um, okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's super fine. Because now we've got the fake tears. Now we've got the, the kind of the double up potential here. The worry is, I guess, if the, the Cresselia goes for something like um, the Trick Room. The Trick Room here. Which would, it would make sense because Zapdos probably doesn't attack, right? Zapdos probably goes, unless it's a Salt Fest, you know? Is it a Salt Fest? Because we don't want to, we don't want to miss the opportunity. Because one of the things we could potentially do is go like double hard into that Cresselia with the Max Wildfire. Because another Rockfall is going to take us down. But is Alex going to be passive enough to like protect the Zapdos here and get the Trick Room up? That's the big question. That is the question. And if he does, what have we got in the back to kind of come in? Uh, we're going to have to just choose some moves. I think we go Max Wildfire into Cress and we go Fake Tears into Cress. We'll double up into that slot. Hope that the Zapdos goes Max Guard. No Max Guard! Ooh, but this works out perfectly. The Ally Switch coming back to bite him in the butt. So that, that, that works perfectly. Even though this will proc the Defiant. This works out beautifully for us because we've got the speed boost and now we should be able to just remove the Zapdos and uh, get this G-Max Wildfire into this slot. Oh, it's not quite enough. Jeez. Jeez. That must be a Salt Fest. It has to be a Salt Fest. So we'll lose the Charizard, but at the same time, we're in a good spot. The Cresselia is now asleep. Charizard's got its Wildfire onto the board. Um, and the residual damage is going to take that Zapdos down anyway, even if you know, we've got the Thunderbolt, um, which we've got to be a bit worried about the, um, of course, the uh, the Marowak coming in. But we've got kind of good protection with, um, yeah, and the Crest is going to be put to sleep. So, do we just bring Torkoal in now? Do I want to bring Venusaur in just yet? Probably not. I probably want to keep Venusaur for a little bit later on if I want to. 
Mm. Let's go. Let's go Venu. Yeah, because yeah, let's go Venu. We can just start sludge bombing the crest. It's going to be asleep this next turn, so we're kind of fine here. And then we've got the switch to talk all if we if we want it. So let's just go sludge bomb. The the, the 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 worrying part here is actually we should have brought in we should have brought in um Ma like I feel like the Marowak could come onto the field now, which would be horrendous for us. Would be horrendous. Um Yeah, the Marowak's gonna come in, I think, now. This is the thing for the Cresselia. And we'll lose Venusaur, and then the match is kind of over. Where we kind of if we get the talk all in. I think we cover our bases because I don't want to lose Venusaur. I don't think I can afford to lose Venusaur, especially if something like Tapu Fini and Marowak's in the back. So I think I like I worry about Alex switching the crest out to the Marowak now. Which would completely protect him. Uh the G Max Wildfire will take him down this next turn. No switch out, so it doesn't look like the Marowak's in the back, which is which is fine. Um, so we didn't need to be, we could have got a sludge bomb off there, but I, I don't regret that turn at all. Uh, Crest gonna stay asleep. Okay. So that yawn coming in pretty handy. Now what comes in? Is it gonna be the Mudsdale? The Mudsdale, I reckon. I reckon it will be. But we got Charm, so we can kind of slow that down a bit. We got your double yawn as well, so that helps us out a bunch. Okay, right. We need to get rid of that crest, you know. We need to, like, probably double up into it. Like, eruption. Thunderbolt probably will be enough to get it, you know. Or fake tears eruption would definitely 100% get it. So it depends what comes in for Alex here on his side. I'd imagine something like the Mudsdale, so it might tie up a little bit of time for Jolteon uh, to go for, like, the, the, the charm into that slot. Just, okay, it's the Marowak. Hmm. Okay, well, that's actually... It's not terrible it's not terrible we're gonna go eruption anyway and we're gonna go for a charm into the marowak just to really make sure that it is as weak as possible and i'm going for the spread damage here i just want to get as much damage onto the cresselia while it's sleeping as possible because there is a chance that alex has went for something like maybe moonlight here um which would make things difficult and you can see like I think our switch last turn wasn't a bad one, just to kind of mitigate that 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 slot. But I think Alex probably wants to just keep the crest on the field to try and burn these sleep turns as soon as possible, as we're going to see a potential ally switch here from the, the crest, I think. Um, but the charm going to be massively useful. Bon Moran coming out. And uh, we can buy our sugar berry, which definitely helps us out a bunch. Uh, doing... <laughs> Minimal damage, so it means that the eruption is still going to get at least a, a, a good chunk of damage off onto both these Pokemon. Um, although, you know, the big problem for us right now is, um, yeah, it's not not quite doing as much as we kind of want it to. But the the wildfire definitely helping against that Cresselia, um, where we're kind of locked. Uh, have we got Earth Power now? I think Earth Power is probably the better option. The problem is though, like. Actually, an eruption. Mm, the G Max Wildfire probably. Now, let's go for an Earth Power and let's go for another Charm. Because the Wildfire will get the Crest. Let's go for another Charm into it. Yeah. Just really slow it down. Getting that charm off again is super, super useful. Marowak's so bulky as well. Crest finally wakes up. There's a psychic coming out. Um, I'll be into the talk hall. Oof. Yeah, that's 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 fat damage. That's fat damage. We should take two of these, so that's fine. And we'll get the earth power off, which which definitely helps. Oof. Ooh, it's so close. But the Venus are in a good spot now to kind of come in and close this game up for us because the wildfire should be enough to get. Uh, the crest, like I say, oh, just hang, just hangs on, just hangs on. I think we don't have any more turns with our wildfire, do we? Let's see. Um, wildfire's done. I think I let Torkoal go down here, you know. Mm. I think I go for a yawn into. 
Actually, are they going to trick room here? Maybe. Are they going to trick room? Because we could potentially catch them if they go for a trick room here. I'm going to yawn into the Marowak. I think they're going to trick room because they know that we've got the, the Venusaur on the back. I think they trick room with Cress here. Okay. Finny coming in. Not the most ideal. But if we can get our Venusaur on the field, we're fine. I just don't want to like switch it in for like for nothing if you know what i mean but the sun going yeah it's not gonna work it's not gonna work there's a the trick room so we do get the trick room up but the problem is like our eruption is not in any place to uh to do any good work Do they preserve does he preserve crest now and switch in? There's it there's there's the I do feel like you switch the Marowak in for the crest now. Where we could eruption and just get damage off. It's just the one thing we could potentially do is Earth Power and we could Thunderbolt. Because are we eruption? No, 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 no. We we go for this player because I think the crest switches out to the Marowak. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. No. There's a Moonblast coming out into the talk hall. So we'll get a Thunderbolt off into the crest, which is which is good, I guess. Uh, but Venusaur not going to be in the greatest spot. We need to stall out these these Trick Room turns because pff, we cannot beat the Marowak. We cannot beat the Marowak with, with Venusaur in the Trick Room. That's the issue. Yeah, we should have tried to stop the Trick Room, I think. Yeah, I think not attacking and allowing him to get the Trick Room up and protecting Torkoal was like the wrong play. We should have we should have just eruptioned at that point. Um, yeah, now Marowak comes in and just destroys us because we can't do anything with Jolteon. Uh, oh. We can't do any. Can't do anything. Can't. Literally cannot do anything. Uh. We don't even have Protect on Venusaur, so it's kind of locked now. Yeah, this is the problem. We, we had an opportunity there, and we just threw it away. We just threw it away. Okay, the Marowak gonna detect. And it's called minding, yeah, which makes it even more difficult for us. So maybe protecting on our protect. And yeah, the thunderbolt not going to be uh, it'll be pulled in by the lightning rod. No, it's not lightning rod. Huh. Huh. Okay, that makes things a little bit more a, a little bit easier to deal with then maybe. Okay. How many turns of Trick Room we got left? It's not Lightning Rod. Rockhead then. Two turns. I don't know if we're going to be able to do this. Now, uh, okay. Well, I still think we go after the Marowak here and we try and get a Thunderbolt in. Because the Marowak Flare Blitzes, right? It goes down to the recoil, which is fine. And the crit didn't matter. Oh, it didn't take the recoil. Okay, there we go. And we go down to this. Okay, well, good game to Alex. Game one. Okay, we've got a good idea of what, what we're kind of going up against. Um, And we'll go into game two and try and turn this around. I think we had a really good start in that match. But like I say, there was that one turn where we, we just really didn't capitalize like we talked about. I'm more disappointed in myself uh, for that, for being super super defensive like passive in that turn when we we did just didn't need to um so yeah good game to alex and we'll go into game two so he's worn up at the moment right chris the zapdos is definitely a sold vest um which makes it a little more tricky to deal with but now he knows that we've got the rock fall let's think let's think let's think let's think I think the Mimikyu, I, th I honestly think Mimikyu is going to be an absolute monster for us here. I think we maybe, like, 
do we need the tall call? Like the tall call was good, but I don't necessarily think we need it. I think like Jolteon Charizard's great, but then I do think the Mimikyu is more worthwhile because then we've got real pressure onto that Zapdos. I think we bring Venusaur. Do we bring Scrafty? Scrafty's great because just the Intimidate, once that, that Zapdos is gone, is amazing. Um, and we can, uh, we can almost allow the Crest to get the Trick Room up if we want. And then get Scrafty onto the field. But it's, it is difficult. I think Scrafty probably helps us out a bunch more. Yeah, than, yeah, we'll go with the Scrafty in this one. We'll swap up. We'll change. We'll bring it. The Scraft. The Scraftmeister to see. Because I don't know if Alex will approach it exactly the same as the last game. And it might be a bad mistake from us not to approach the game like we approach it in that first one. Because I think, like, early game, we, we definitely had... A really nice opportunity to kind of take take the take a, a good lead um okay well we're gonna see trick room here i would imagine that we're probably we've got to taunt the fungus i'm not gonna max i don't think yeah i don't think i'm gonna max because we've got we've got Venusaur as an option in the back if we need to, and Venusaur still will work, I think. Um, I'm just going to Heat Wave. Yeah, so there's a Rage Powder. They're going to get the Trick Room up. But we just want damage onto these Pokemon, really, right now. That's the thing. Yeah. And I think the next turn, yeah, that's fine. Because now we can go for our Sword Stance with Mimikyu. And then we got Shadow Sneak that we can kind of take advantage of. So just Sword Stance. And then we'll just Heat Wave again. And we want to just keep chipping this Cresselia. And I'd imagine the Cresselia might have Mental Herb, you know? Because I don't think we saw an item on it in Game 1. Pretty sure. But here's a chance, like, Alex has got the opportunity to break out of skies on a Mimikyu, which makes it a little bit more tricky for us, obviously, with that kind of security blanket that we've got at the minute, where we've got at least one hit where we can take for free. I mean, it does allow us to get the sword stance up, which is nice. But we just need to kind of... And I prefer the Trick Room going up early in this game. I think that the the, the fact that it went up so late in that, that second game, and we, we kind of allowed him to do it, uh, made it, made it difficult. So there's a seed bomb coming out from the fungus. Breaks our disguise. We're going to just see a double up with the psychic here. Potentially, I would imagine. Um, we do get the sword stance up though. So it, it puts a little bit more pressure on, on Alex to uh, to kind of be concentrate a little bit more around the Mimikyu than just this Charizard, you know. Uh, the uh, heat wave does hit. Getting a bit more chip onto that Cresselia, which is always good. Takes down the fungus, so... And reversing the trick room back out. Okay, that's kind of interesting. Um, helps us, I guess. But then, is the Zapdos going to make an appearance? It's the Mudsdale. Oh, oh. Here he is. Um, yeah, helping hand. Helping hand going to be obnoxious to deal with. Um, which we can't really do anything about. I think we just play rough. And do we just go G-Max Wildfire this turn? Yeah, I think we got all in on the Mudsdale here. It makes me think that the Mudsdale isn't a Salt Vest either then. Because uh, I 100% I, I think from that Zapdos, from the Calx. Like Zapdos, Galarian Zapdos is not that bulky. So the Salt Vest makes a lot of sense there, you know, with the Rockfall. Which I would imagine we'll probably see coming out here from the Mudsdale, you know. But I'm going all in on the, the Zard again. We're going Zard Party. And we're going to try and get we're going to try and get the knockout plus two Mimikyu is in a good spot now to just nail this mud cell even if it maxes with a bunch of damage from um from the player rough but we could see an ally switch as well here's muddy big muddy horse
Right. Let's see. Is this combo going to be enough? I don't know if it is. I don't know. Probably not. Probably not. The horse is so bulky, man. There's a helping hand. And this is what I mean, like, there's no point in attacking Crest this turn. I mean, to get rid of it for the next turn, for sure, but at the same time. They may go after the Mimikyu here, though, you know? They may, like, decide, like, let's just go after the Mimikyu, because we've got the Zard kind of in our pocket going forward. Oh, come on. Are you kidding? Play rough, doing play rough things. I don't have the best of luck with play rough. As many of you will know from my time in VGC, play rough is a, an evil move, and I keep going back to it. We could have really done with the. Um, we could have really done with the. Uh, yeah, we could have really done with that hitting here. Now we've got an option where we can bring in Scrafty, start the bulk up train, or we could bring in Venusaur and put things to sleep. We know the life orbs on the uh, the Mudsdale. Um. Just trying to think, like an, a bulk up, max airstream. Yeah, it might might. I think Scrafty. Let's bring Scrafty. Let's keep Venu for later in this game. And the Intimidate's super useful, especially with the Charty Berry that we got. Um, and I'd expect maybe a Helping Hand or an Ally Switch to come out here. I think we bulk up with Scrafty regardless. Um, do we go for an Airstream? An Airstream. Makes sense too. Uh, yeah, let's go for that into the Mudsdale. I expect maybe Ally Switch to come out here, but we could also say Helping Hand. Um, it kind of mitigates... The Intimidate we've just put onto the Mudsdale. But the Airstream is going to be useful. Especially if the Zapdos is in the back. It just means that we've got the speed jump on it for the late game. And it makes it a little bit more... Well, it's it's tough. Because like if Alex here clicks Trick Room. Which he's not. But it does make it a little bit more tricky. We'll get the Airstream off. Which is nice. It'd be good consistent damage into this Mudsdale. Not really. Oh my god. It does nothing. We really needed that player rough to hit we really did now that scrafty should be able to get the the bulk up off which m will allow it to uh, at least take an attack a bit better from this mudsdale this next turn the special defense buff to the mudsdale really helping it out there and uh, we are going to see the rock fall come in but um intimidate is going to help that the charty bear of course is going to help that is that a crit is that a crit no it's not a crit. It takes us down. Jesus, with the life orb. Okay. Well. All down to Scrafty Venu. Okay, well. This Scrafty's probably got the opportunity to get the crest this next turn. And Venu can put that Mudsdale to sleep. And the wildfire. Yeah, that Cress is a sitting duck this next turn. And so is a Mudsdale, to be honest. Like, we could probably even Ice Punch that. But I do want to start putting things to sleep. If I can. I, yeah. I'm just thinking, did the Cress take residual damage from the, the thing? Or has it, got, has it got, has it got the safety goggles? Potentially has, you know. I'm going to crunch it anyway. And I'm going to go for, oh. I mean, at this point, Scrafty should be faster than Venu, right? So we could kind of, in case of the ally switch. Let's see. Let's see. I need to just, I need to just check something. Oh, we've not got time to do it. We've not got time. I just feel like the ally switch is coming. The ally switch is coming. 100%. <laughs> Let's click Sleep Powder into Mudsdale. <clears throat> we know it's got the life orb, so we can get a sleep powder off into it. Yeah, there's the other switch. We knew we knew it was gonna happen. We knew it was gonna happen. And now we probably lose Venu. Yeah. That's why it would have been better to just go uh double into the, the Mudsdale slot. Yeah, that's crafty. Yeah, not. Okay. Well the defense drop's not really gonna help us out a bunch. Uh the max quake coming out. Can we take it? Minus one. No. 
No, the life orb's just too much. And it's all down to Scrafty now. So the thing is, if there's a Tapu Fini in the back, we we've lost. We've absolutely, like, just collapsed in this one. I'm really disappointed with how we've kind of, we've uh, we've dealt with this, you know, because I think we, we definitely had the options. It just shows that Alex is just, just making the better, better calls, better reads all the time. So I can't be too uh, upset. It's just how it is, which is slightly frustrating. The only thing is that you can think, if it's there is a there is a saving grace. If the Finney's not on the back, then we've got an opportunity because the Fungus is down. The Quest is pretty much near enough down. So anything but the Finney and we're we're kind of good. Okay, Marowak. Well, we probably got this then. We can crunch. So oh, I thought it was over, but it 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 maybe not. It maybe isn't over. So. Uh, Maybe. Still, not over till the fat lady sings, eh? Get that fat lady out quickly. Come on, Scrafty. Be the saving grace here. Pull this back. 1-1. One, one. I love that I'm just on the brink of, like, just giving up. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It still could be over, mind, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Come on, Scrafty. Crest is asleep. That's fine. We don't really care about Crest at all. We just need to get rid of this Marowak. It's not quite enough to pick up the knockout. But the Flare Blitz, we should... Well, we'll t we will take. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The Recoil will take that down. Oh, no, it doesn't get Recoil. It doesn't get the Recoil, does it? Ah, the Recoil. Ah! Now, if that Crest wakes up and... Oh, no, the Residual Damage, we've locked it. The Charizard comes in clutch. Okay, so the Ally Switch and the Wake Up there would have been the one thing that would have been the, the worst case scenario for us. And the leftovers. Man, that Marowak is a... That is monstrous. We're plus one defense. Plus one defense. Scrafty coming in, King. Tying it up 1-1 one, one for us. Okay, here we go. Excitement getting into game three. Whew. Wow. Okay, that was very close. That was very close. So what do you bring there? Fungus, Cress, Mudsdale, Marowak. Marowak. No Jolteon for us. Um. All right. Well, there we go. Good game. Okay. Going into a game three. So, I like the, the Mimic. I love the Mimikyu. I think the Mimikyu is great here. So, if you're Alex thinking about, like, what were you going to bring? Are you going to try and get the Trick Room up? Like, has the Fungus got Protect? Because if you Protect the Fungus turn one, that uh, becomes very difficult very quickly. But, we could also bring the Torkoal in the back. Um, Over the Venu. But the Venu was... Did the Venu do anything? It put the Crest to sleep, I mean, which helped. But other than that, I think Torkoal helps mitigate the Trick Room a little bit better. Although the Fungus is going to be slower than us anyway. So the Venu is probably a better option overall. Um, Yeah, let's go Char. Let's go Mimi. I think Venu. I think... Hmm... We just need to manage Venusaur a little bit better, I think, in the late game. I think that's not what we've been doing very well. I think, like, that's been a huge problem for us. Like, <sighs> Scrafty or Torkoal. I'm going to go Torkoal because I think there might be a good end game where we can potentially, if it comes down to, like, the Marowak again, we've got the Yawn there. We'll take a Flare Blitz, even in the sun from Marika. It'll do a lot of damage, but then we can protect. They can go to sleep, and we got at least probably two turns then to get an Earth Power knockout into it. We've got to hope. We've got to hope that this is the right selection. The Torko Vin, Vinu, Vinu Torkoal is going to be the winning combo. Cresselia Mudsdale. Right. Okay. Well. The problem is... The problem is here... That we know that Max Rockfall will help in hand, will knock out the Charizard turn one, which makes things very difficult for us. Um, makes things very, very difficult for us, for sure. And we could Max and Max Guard turn one and taunt the Cress. Um, because we're not just, just not getting the damage onto the Mudsdale like we need to.
no, let's just do this. Let's just do this. This might seem like mad crazy. I'm not even going to worry about ta taunting. I'm just going to get the sword stance up and I'm going to just go for the residual damage chip to start like getting it out and get some damage on that Mudsdale as soon as I can. I'm not going to start guessing around because there's a chance that Alex thinks he's probably going to switch his Charizard out uh, to Scrafty here. So he might commit into the Mimikyu to get that special defense boost like we saw and then get that Trick Room up. The big thing here for us is like if we can get this sword stance up with Mimikyu, it puts a little bit more pressure on that side of the field, detracts a little bit away from the Charizard, but at the same time, got to hope that the, the Charty Berry stays strong. Didn't really account for Life Orb on the Mudsdale here uh, with the Charty Berry Calcs, and that's what kind of throws it, especially with that helping hand boost. So Alex does have a way right now to really just get rid of the Charizard cleanly turn one. We could have max guarded here, but I don't really know what that gets us, especially if he goes for an attack and he's setting up Trick Room like we're kind of probably going to see right now. Um, the best case scenario for us... <sighs> there isn't a best case scenario. It's all bad because the Trick Room going up. Yeah, the max quake coming out, which makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense. Okay. The thing is, the next turn, does he does he think that we are going to... Um, does he think that we're going to switch the... the or oh, protect the Charizard, you know? Because let's just see, did we bring... We brought the Torkoal, so we're not in the worst spot. Because we could potentially max got. Uh, I kind of. I want to. I want to attack with the Charizard here. I want to attack with the Charizard. Because he may max Rockfall, but again, like the max guard. Uh, I don't uh, know. I think we'll max guard. It's just a waste of a turn if he attacks into Mimikyu here, which he may do, because we're in such a, a horrible spot. Yeah, let's just attack into the Mudsdale, get more damage onto it, and go for a Shadow Sneak into the Crest. Just in case he goes for the Mimikyu. Yep. So if the Mimikyu sticks around, it'll be able to get the Crest the next turn at least. Max Quake again. Come on. Okay, that's good. We lose the Mimikyu, but that's fine because the residual damage that we're going to pick up now onto that Chris Cresselia and the Mudsdale, even though they are plus two, it might just be enough for Torkoal to come in and kind of pick up a knockout. Maybe, maybe, maybe. But we can max guard the next turn, which is which is which is super huge for us. So the psychic coming in. Ah, special defense drop, okay. It's just the chip damage, isn't it? You know? The chip damage there. But the crest gonna drop the next turn, as well as that mudsdale. Well, Mudsdale's not going to drop the next turn, is it? But we can bring the Torque all in now. Okay. How many turns of Trick Room we've got left? I think too many. Too many, if I'm completely honest. Three. Yeah. Like, Torque is our most important part of this. And now it makes sense to go for the Rockfall. Problem is, if we protect now, I don't think we protect now, you know? I think we go for it, another one and just blatantly go for it. Because the Mudsdale is only going to be able to take one thing down. And I think, out of everything, you really want to get rid of the Torkoal. Because it's just taking advantage of the Trick Room right now. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see where he goes. Not doing enough to that Mudsdale at all. And Rockfall, where are we going? Into... Into the Torkoal. Perfect. Okay, now the Charizard gets that third and final attack off, which is ideal, what we want. And then we can protect the next turn, which ha definitely helps us out a bunch. And maybe with the Life Orb Recall, this damage here, it's going to be enough to get... It's going to be enough to get the Mudsdale. You still got to worry about the Marowak in the back, though. That's the thing, you know? 
Yeah, the Mudsdale dropping. So the Cresselia gone. Whoa, it's going to be the Marowak. The Marowak's the problem for us. And no protect on Venu makes it very difficult for us to kind of... To deal with it. So it's, uh, it's going to go either way. Yeah, the Marowak's there, of course. Yeah. And Tapu Fini. Which makes it even more tricky. Yeah. Okay, well. What are we looking at? Two more turns. Yeah. I don't know. If, I don't think we can do this. I really don't. I think we can probably deal with... We can probably... Uh, depend, it depends what the Marowak's got, honestly. Is the Marowak going to attack here? Yes, I would, I would say so. Um... I'm going to double in on it. I don't think there's really much coming back here. I think the Marowak in these Trick Room turns does enough. Maybe the recoil damage with the Scorching Sands would be enough to get the, the Marowak. But then we've not really got a way to deal with the Finny. At all. Like the Muddy Waters are going to be enough by themselves. And we can protect. Not even protect. Man. That's just insane damage. Single target attack. Good game to Alex. It was a great set. It was nice to be able to pull it back. But, yeah, the trick room there from the crest. I think the problem was, for us, we weren't... We were... The, the Mudsdale got all of its attacks off when, when, when it needed to. So, I think that's the big thing, you know. Um, bit disappointed on my end, because I think that end game was a bit... Uh, I don't know. The end game could have been better. Maybe... And even if I say Scrafty would have been better there, I don't know if it would have been. Um, I think something like... Right, Piri would have been a better shout to deal with, like something like the Marowak. And it was a really good shout on his end, and uh, not to go Lightning Rod, which, yeah, obviously we were caught out with it early on. But the big thing for us, I think, if we had Protect on or Sash, uh, Protect and Sash on, on Venusaur, it would have been a way better call. I think the move uh, item choice and the move selections there were, weren't necessarily as good as they could have been, and maybe gone with a bit more of an offensive tour call. Would have helped. I think maybe something like um, charcoal would have been a bit a bit better, or even an offensive item like the life orb could have been that little bit more that would have tipped it into our favor. But I think the big thing for us was obviously letting that mudsdale get the special defense boosts up, and then it went a bit south from there. But good game to Alex. Hope you enjoyed week one. We'll try and come back in fighting style for week two. So keep an eye out for the analysis video on that one. At the end of the day, it's been a lot of fun and I hope you've enjoyed it. So thanks for sticking around, friends. Have a great rest of your day and I'll catch up with you all again very soon. So until then, take care. Bye-bye.